we now have the ability to reset the age of an entire animal, leading to one day being able to reset the entire age of our bodies. The famous David Sinclair, when compared with his 10 years old interview, will seem younger than he is now. He in his podcasts and speeches on TEDx has told about his secret. He no more aims on slow aging, but on age reversal. It is intriguing and doable too. In this video, we will discuss what and when to eat throughout the course of a year, not just to optimize your overall longevity, but also to improve your wellness and how you feel and look. Eat less, three words, eat less frequently. Based on all the information we'll cover today, that is the one item that will most significantly affect your longevity. All right, so this doesn't always imply cutting back on calories, but it can. That's favorable. However, many others find it difficult to do so if they were calorie counters. It comes naturally though. When you eat just one meal a day, like I currently do, you lose weight and regain your 20-year-old physique. That's a pleasant extra. However, you continue to carry that weight. To ensure he is not going hungry, Sinclair makes sure to have a bigger dinner. Clearly, famine or malnutrition are not the topics of discussion here. It's all about burning off more calories in less time. That's because eating more meals in a shorter amount of time usually results in consuming fewer calories. That's not actually the case here, is it? It goes beyond cutting calories. It's about what happens to our body when we eat fewer times. Yes, exactly let's get to it. In actuality, though it goes beyond the timing of meals, we'll discuss how precisely that works. The time without food is crucial for enhancing the body's defenses against aging and optimizing longevity. You can still benefit from having a huge body quickly. They have studied obese mice in the lab who are tricked into believing they are fasting and survive the same amount of time as a slender mouse. Basically, the goal is to put your body into a state of defense at any weight, but there are some ideal body weights to consider as well. It's obvious that carrying extra weight can hasten the aging process. What we don't want is for people to think that they can be overweight as long as they fast a little bit because, hey, this works even if you're overweight. We're not fat shaming anyone, but lowering weight is beneficial. We're just following the evidence. This podcast focuses on scientific findings rather than what is deemed socially acceptable. It's also true that a slimmer physique will extend your life. That is true. It is not required to follow our advice in order to benefit. Interestingly enough, eating fewer times will also cause you to lose weight as a side effect. Although this is a pleasant side effect, our main point is that these are the kinds of things you should take into account when living your life. We'll assist you in getting there. We'll introduce it to you gradually. It can be made easier with a few tips. In the end, you'll have a way of living and hopefully a physique that extends your life by decades. On this show, we promise to truly adhere to science and inform the public when research involving animals is used to support a claim. The disclaimer in this case is crucial when the science is derived from human studies. You can expand lifespan just by adjusting the glucose levels. We'll get to how it functions in humans. Quite similarly, we also demonstrated that that mechanism is regulated by a group of genes. The cell is being harmed by more than simply glucose. Low energy can activate a certain genetic pathway, and the genes we discussed in the previous episode are known as sirtuins, and our bodies have seven of these genes in humans and five in yeast. They also react to low energy. In addition, they react to additional stimuli like high heat, low amino acid levels, and excessive salt levels. These so-called hormetic effects will activate the sirtuins. And in this instance, low energy caused these sirtuin activating enzymes to become active. After then, they dealt with both the stabilization of the epigeno and DNA repair. There's a lot there, so let's take it slowly and carefully now. First, let's discuss sirtuins. Since the mechanisms involved in the cases of yeast and other organisms are remarkably similar, what's actually happening at that point? When yeast or any other model organism is subjected to calorie restriction, what really happens with sirtuins is fasting. Indeed, their function is to increase longevity. Thus, they are safeguarding DNA and ensuring that genes remain on when they should be on at the minuscule level of the cell. AMP key increases in response to hunger. For those who are unaware, AMP activated kinase is simply an enzyme that reacts to low energy. It goes by the acronym AMPK. You will therefore produce more of it when you're hungry. Additionally, it produces more mitochondria which is one of its primary functions. As we age, mitochondria are lost. Additionally, we get more when we exercise, and this is one method of artificially boosting that production. Why are extra mitochondria needed? They are necessary for the body to properly metabolize food, 
but they are also primarily utilized in the production of chemical energy. You will therefore feel better after turning on AMPK. You'll combat aging and have greater vitality. Moreover, when you use the word Yule a lot in this passage, you're talking about humans, which are probably the ones who are watching and listening to this, but let's not forget that a lot of this study was conducted on model creatures. Human studies are far more difficult. However, we have them for people. Although they are scarcer, we do have them for humans. Furthermore, the majority of the sample sizes are significantly smaller. But there is enough information regarding MTOR and MPKE to draw firm inferences about their positive effects on human health as well. The diabetes medication metformin stimulates AMPK. Furthermore, it has been demonstrated through an analysis of tens of thousands of individuals with type 2 diabetes that metformin slows down the onset of other aging-related diseases in addition to diabetes. All of the information I've given you combined has convinced me that fasting and medications that simulate fasting will be crucial for both your body's current and long-term wellness. If you have a big glass of orange juice for breakfast or, heaven forbid, a piece of toast, your blood sugar will spike and you will feel fantastic. However, your body will then release too much insulin, which will remove the glucose from your bloodstream and cause a glucose deficit, which is known as hypoglycemia. And then your body releases ghrelin, which makes you feel hungry and demands that you eat something. It's important to hydrate your body as much as possible. For me, I need hot water, tea, and coffee continuously throughout the day. Any sense of hunger is eliminated when one is well hydrated and full of liquids. If you truly need to eat something, you should also eat nuts. It's well known that consuming some protein quickly reduces feelings of hunger. Indeed, while working with his patients, my friend the cardiologist John Day says something like, if you got to eat, just start with a handful of nuts and just give me 20 minutes after that. There won't be any hunger for you. David Sinclair says for the first time in my life, I've regained my 20-something physique and I'm not turning back. You will, however, become hungry. Initially, anyone who begins this will be hungry. Naturally, they will be quite hungry. Yes, it's not going to be simple, and it's not easy, but it will be worthwhile. And here's where we need to make a crucial point. We briefly discussed it at the beginning, but I believe we should go over it again, because it's very crucial to understand that we're not talking about starving, but rather intermittent fasting combined with appropriate nutrition. And that adequate component is crucial. In the end, sugar shortens your life, shorten your life expectancy, cause type 2 diabetes, and most likely add cardiovascular disease to the mix. Don't let your blood sugar levels rise. Moreover, excessive glucose levels will cause your body to shut down those defense mechanisms. Keep in mind, especially AMPP and the sirtuins, the sugar turns them off. Your body's defenses against sickness and aging will therefore be weakened if you eat three meals a day plus snacks and maintain that diet for the majority of the day. Instead, maintain steady low blood sugar levels. You won't experience cognitive fog, and there won't be as many altered proteins that cause illness. Living in houses with air conditioning and heating and constant access to food defies our evolutionary blueprint. Therefore, we must return to those times when we occasionally went without food or clothing. Later on, we'll discuss cold therapy. Essentially, the idea is that in order for our bodies to fight illnesses, maintain perfect health as we age, and give us longevity, we need to put them in a state of want. If you remember nothing else about this issue, just keep this in mind.